I have always been a fan of Mossberg shotguns. Owned quite a few. Really love them. Bomb proof, battle proven. They're just solid. And this is the first Mossberg rifle I have had here in the Rat Cave. Uh, I've actually got a couple in here at the minute. Uh, let's just dig this other one out. This is for a future review. Don't know which one I'll put out first. Got the MVP LC light chassis. This is the MVP LR long range. I had to think then. God, I've got that much stuff in here at the minute, guys. God, how many guns you got in here, Rack? There's quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. It's busy. Busy in the Rack Cave at the minute. But this is the Mossberg LR, standing for long range, the MVP uh, series. And I've got to say, it's really, really nice for what it is. I mean, it won't be everyone's style. It is, I don't know, I'll call it a little bit mm, old school. You know, when you go back to like the old Parker Hale rifles, sort of like a police or military rifle, kind of reminds me of that. It actually reminds me of the, uh, the Remington 700 I once owned probably seven or eight years ago. That was dropped in a Choti Ultimate Sniper stock. I don't know, it kind of reminds me of that, although that was a slightly different, slightly different stock, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's, you know, D green, whatever. But yeah, it's been an interesting one, this has. Chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'll give you some specs. So let me just read it, how it is off their website. So this is in 6.5 Creedmoor. Mag capacity is 10 plus 1. I'll tell you more about the mags in a minute because that's what makes this MVP series really good. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, medium ball barrel, uh, barrel, ball barrel, barrel. Um, fluted, threaded as well. It's 22 inches long. One in eight twist rate for the 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, barrel finish is in matte, it's, they call it matte blued, but yeah, okay. I won't really say it was blued, but it's called matte blued. Weighing in at eight pounds, overall length is 41 and a half inches. Now, I do like it, but I have got a few little gripes. Don't know, I just have, uh, but we'll just roll with this in the normal rack and load style review. But the first thing I'm gonna absolutely rave about is the fact that it takes AR style magazines. With it being 6.5, it is AR-10 star magazines. Okay, so 7.62, 308, 6.5 magazines, they're the same, okay? That is an absolute bonus, and that is the beauty of these MVP, um, the MVP series of rifles from Mossberg, is they take AR magazines, okay? So if you like your ARs, but you're after a bolt gun, you haven't got to go out and shell out loads of money on new mags. Same goes for this uh, MVP LC. Again, AR style magazines, 556 this one is. That's another video, stay tuned. Really, really good idea. Um, I know a lot of Scout rifles do that. I think, Re is it Remington or Ruger? I know it's the Ruger Scout. I think that takes AR mags. Um, just brilliant, brilliant idea. Why, you know, it's the most popular magazine that you're going to get out there, isn't it? So why not utilise them? Brilliant, brilliant idea. Really need to see more of that on bolt action rifles, really do. I mean, you take, for example, I don't know, Remy 700 that I've got here. Uh, this one's everyone. You know, it's going to, you're going to have to, for, for example, let's say if you're to get a Remy 700, something like this in uh, Accuracy, Accuracy International stock. The AI mags, what are they? They're 50, 60, 70 quid here in the UK. Expensive magazines. Yeah, you can get copies, but a lot of money. But if you're running ARs anyway, then you're pretty much going to have AR mags anyway, aren't you? So yeah, maybe not AR-10 magazines. Depends what sort of AR you're going to run. But anyway, let's jump into this review. In 
sort of the normal style as we do. Let's just make some room. This is a bit of a long rifle. So taking it from the recoil pad and uh, fairly soft rubber. Um, you know, it's quite nice. It was comfortable. It's 6.5, so it's not sort of um, banging your shoulder like a 308. So it's pretty comfortable to use. I do like this caliber, I must admit. I am really, really warm into it. Loads of guys rave about the 6.5 over 308. You know, it really is a bit more gentle on your shoulder. So hence why there's not much of a recoil pad. Yeah, it, it does bounce a little bit, but not half as bad as 308. Not half as bad. The stock is a polymer um, stock coated in like, I was gonna say like a stippled finish, but it's not, it's more like, a, I call it like a sandpapery finish. So yeah, more of a sandpaper finish. It isn't um, ambidextrous, this stock isn't, although I was shooting it at, um, I was shooting it three, uh, I was shooting it left hand, when I can say it, uh, and it was all right, it felt comfortable, but it is sort of a righty, you know, because you can see that sort of scalloped out pistol grip. Very comfortable, really comfortable to shoot. You know, like I say, with a 6.5, really comfortable to shoot. Ergonomics of the stock, really nice, really comfortable, although I didn't get the full benefit because like I say, I was shooting it uh, left-handed, but it was all right, it was all right, it's comfortable. But you right is, yeah, it's, it's a lot more comfortable. A lot more comfortable. Moving on to, we're pretty much covered. Well, you, as you can see, you've got an adjustable cheek piece there. That is moved or adjusted by pressing this button here. I'm trying to do it one-handed on camera. So you press that button and that sort of locks it in. You're only going to go to about, well, I'll just take it out and show you a lot. You're only going to go probably about an inch or so. So that's locked in a lot. So you're going to get a little bit more height. Well, we're a fair bit of height, really. So gives you a bit of adjustment there. Not bad. That is in like a soft touch. I think they call it moss. Moss touch or something like that. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. Does the job. It's comfy. Even for a lefty, it's comfy. Can't get it in. That's what she said. Um, so yeah, not bad. Not bad. Comfortable. Um, you've got a sling swivel stuck there. And you've got two up front. Obviously, you can throw on a bipod. This is not really... Oh, I've just dropped my bike. Hang on, guys. Oh, cut, cut. Can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Oh, drop my mic. Oh, I don't know. You know me, guys. I roll with this. I roll with these videos. <laughs> Try not to do any sort of retakes and stuff. I'm going to actually leave this in because it's quite funny. Right, you just dropped your mic, dude. Where were, where were we? Um, forgot what I've lost. I've lost my trail of thought now. Um, yeah, the stock's really nice. I really do like the stock. Um, like I said, it is nice and flat. Uh, at the fore end there. So, real nice bench rifle. You wouldn't really use this as a field rifle. Uh, it's just a heavy one. It is a bit of a heavy one. Pfft, yeah, of course you can, but uh, I don't know, myself, I I wouldn't. It's just a bit of a heavy one. I'd go something for, a, for something a lot lighter than this, if you're lugging it around the hills or the moors or whatever. Um, so definitely a great target rifle. Like I said, with that flat um, forend there, you know, that makes for an excellent bench rifle. Really does, really does. Um, moving on, now this way I'm gonna kinda get a little bit gripey, is the bolt. Now, actually, talking about the bolt, it really does remind me of Remy 700. Let's just get this one back. I know this one is a left-handed one. My own personal rifle, guys. It does remind me of the Remy 700. It's a lot like it. So you look at that bolt there and the safety. I always call them Remington 700 safety catches. Don't know, very, very similar. Very similar. 
Just saying, just saying. Let's get that out of the way. God, that thing is heavy. Um, so yeah, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's although it's not a Remington 700 action, it looks very similar. And it's, the Remington 700, after all, is a proven platform, isn't it? I know, I know they're a bit industrial, but you know, battle proven. Police and military uh, in America have used them for God knows how long, haven't they? So let's have a look at the bottom. Like I said, this is one of my little gripes with this rifle. I just find it a bit of a rattler. Look at that. It's not, I just, just don't find it mega refined. I know obviously when it's locked up, you know, it's locked up, but I don't, you just find it a bit, I don't know. It's not exactly a Mercedes, it's more of a Massey Ferguson, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't know, it's just a bit, it's kind of like a bit rough and ready. I mean that in a, in a nice, I'm trying to be too polite here, aren't I? I don't know, I just find it a bit, a bit rough, the bolt. And I've found that as well in the MVP. I know these are demo rifles. I just find them a bit, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of flapping about there. I don't know, it's, I just, I've not sort of really seen that in a lot of bolt actions. I know, depending on how many rounds it's had, obviously, but you'd expect, I mean, this is my 700. Nothing sort of fancy. Yeah, it's a little bit rattly when the bolt is halfway out, well, most of the way out. I mean, that'll probably won't mean anything to anyone. You know, people will be like, oh, right, you know, at the end of the day, the bolt's sort of hanging out. It's gonna have a little bit of play in it. But I don't know, it's, I don't know. Just thought I'd mention it, guys. Just thought I'd mention it. But it didn't sort of, um, cause any problems so no feed issues nothing like that that is your bolt release right there i'll take the bolt out let's have a look at the bolt i do like the way that the bolt is fluted kind of nice kind of nice slightly different bolt there from what you'll sort of see on um a lot of platforms is because i think it's this bit here let me just get this right when it's locked up that's the bit that strips strips the round from an AR style magazine. So it has to be slightly different, um, the bolt doors, to sort of strip out um, from, a, uh, from an AR mag. So I think it, as you I'll kind of demonstrate it here, I think it's got to go like that, if that makes any sense. Let's compare it to the 700 bolt shall we if we can get it out oh no i can't get it out i've got to fold the stock up and everything on it forget that but that is your bolt okay so i had no issues like i said i just found it a little bit a little bit rough and ready as far as loading this thing up maybe it needs a bit of lubing up um i don't know maybe it does it just bit of tractor grease on it you know just to give it a bit of just to give it a bit of um bit of slick and silkiness to it but but that's your bolt anyway like i said i didn't have any problems at all let's just give you a bit of a look at down there with that bolt in you've got i'm just noticed there uh mossberg's m on the bottom of the pistol grip there trigger is nice you've got a uh Safety on the trigger as well. Almost, if you look closely, it's like a lightning bolt there. That looks pretty cool. Put the bolt back in. You just literally just drop it back in like any conventional uh, bolt there. So, not bad. Like I say, just a little bit rough on when it's, it just feels a little bit rough. And I don't know how old this particular rifle is. It, like I say, it is a demo rifle. Could have had thousands and thousands of rounds there. I just, for me, if this is a brand new straight out of the box rifle, 
I'd expect that just to feel a little bit more slick. Or am I just being a bit, I don't know, a bit too picky. At the end of the day, price point for these, I mean, I think they're around the thousand pound mark here in the UK. I don't like to give prices that just go out of date. So it's, it's not like your high end rifle, for example, like it's not a high end rifle. So kind of, kind of sort of like mid range, I guess. But nevertheless, it does feel pretty bomb proof. There's no doubt about it. Let's move on to the uh, receiver as well. Um, well, there's not really that much to talk about the receiver. Um, the actual rifle is supplied with Picatinny rail so you can throw on a scope. That is a loophole. What is it? I forget what it is. What's this one? 4.5 to 14. Yeah, 4.5 to 14 times 50. Uh, real LRP is this real excellent scope. I do like the loophole scopes, I must admit. Loophole, Bushnell. Do like them. Do like them. I'm not on that Vortex bandwagon. Don't get me wrong, I like Vortex. The... Uh, Remy's wearing a Vortex. Do like Vortex, but I do like loopholes and Bushnells very much so. Very much so. The best part, like I said, the best part about this rifle is the fact that it takes AR magazines. Really, really good. What I will say though, on this particular rifle, and this is kind of weird because I love the fact that it takes AR magazines, but I just don't like the way, and I know I kind of know why they've done it. The mag release is just, it's not great, okay? So you've not got like a massive paddle sticking out there. You've got to pretty much get your finger in that recess. You can see it there, and press that. You've got to give it a good press. It is a little bit fiddly. If you're wearing gloves, you're going to struggle, okay? And it does require a bit of a press. I get why they've done it. I mean, if the well, I get get it more if this was a hunter, if this was a field rifle, you know, because guys would be saying, "Oh, I've had my rifle slung, you know, and I've I've caught the the paddle there, and I've lost my magazine." I get that. So that's probably why they've done that. Is just so. So no one sort of accidentally presses the uh, the paddle and releases the magazine without them knowing about it while they're walking around with it. Hence, and, you know, losing your magazine or whatever. I'd get that if it was a field rifle. With it being the target rifle, it didn't really need that. I probably would have just had a, a longer paddle on it. Referring to the, uh, to the Remy again. You know, long paddle there. Obviously, different style of magazines on there, AR style magazines on that. But so, is that really a gripe? Uh, probably on the, a rifle of this style, you know. It, I mean, it does look kind of tactical, so I probably would have just left that protruding a little bit. Yeah, fair enough on a hunting rifle, absolutely. But it is what it is. Barrel is what was it? It's 22 inches long. Fluted, uh, threaded as well. Okay, uh, that is, I think it's half inch UNF. I'll throw in details at the uh, bottom of the video. But yeah, so you can can this thing up. I did get this thing hot, I ain't gonna lie. I did get it hot um, while I was at the range. I, I had a lot to do, so. It didn't really get much cooling down time, but it did well, it did well. And that will lead us on to accuracy. This was using, uh, what did it have? A tactical ammunition, Celia and Bellet, okay? These were, what were they, 140 grain uh, full metal jacket boat tails, 65 Creed more. This is the results I got, and I was shooting off a foam action sports rest if you don't know what one of those is, it's one of these. I really do rave about these things. Okay, these are ace. I have that much stuff to carry down the range, guys. You know, a heavy rest. 
uh, I can kind of get rid of when I've got these because these are dead lightweight. They're just easier. You know, when you're carrying rifles, ammunition, camera equipment, gongs, I don't know, if you can shed a bit of weight, it's pretty, pretty good. So these are the results I got then, 100 yards, testing MOA, the Mossberg MVP. This is the security one, by the way. They do call this the security or the MVP LR65 Creedmoor. This is what happened with me. This is me shooting guys, so obviously you lot are gonna do way better, way better. I know you are. But my best group was that one. Oh yeah, that is a group I'm very happy with, okay? So that's what happened with me on the day. And I got it pretty hot as well. And I was shooting the gong as well, as you can see in the footage. Just to, I know obviously, you know, you can stretch these things out way further. 6.5 Creedmoor is good for a thousand yards. Easy peasy. But I do my testing. I test for MOA, see what they do on paper at MOA. On the day, it is what it is. It don't, I don't fake it. You know, I don't review guns unless I shoot them because it's kind of like doing a car review without even driving it. I really don't see the point. But, uh, so that is what it did on the day. Thanks to Double Juice Firing Range for the targets. So yeah, not bad. Like I said, you guys will do way better. Off a bipod, you'll do even better, okay? So it is what it is. Maybe with some posher ammunition, you might do better as well. So that is, that is how it performed with me on the day. Shall we give it a trigger pull? Yeah, let's do it. Let's take the mag out so I'm Obviously it is clear, but I'd just like to double check. We don't want no accidents in the rat cave to spoil my day. So let's give this thing a pull. I think it goes from about three to five uh, pounds, the trigger. Oh, look at that. That's on his lowest setting then. Just over three pounds on the trigger. Not a bad trigger at all, not, not graunchy or anything. Let's just give, give that one a go again. Yeah, trigger is nice. Trigger is nice. Um, just a nice rifle to shoot. Like I say, 6.5 Creedmoor, nice and gentle on the shoulder. Um, just a real nice rifle. Just a, just a little bit, just that bolt. But that's me being really picky. I don't know, maybe it is. I don't know. I like it, I do like it. I do like the rifle, it's solidly built, pretty rugged. Um, I had no problems with it, no feed issues um, with the uh, the AR-10 magazines. These are Magpul uh, P-Mags, by the way, 10 rounders. Um, no, no feed issues at all, it just ran really well, really well, no problems whatsoever. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm pretty damn happy with this rifle. Free floating barrel as well. Just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, pillar bedded as well, the stock is to the, uh, to the action. So just to increase that little bit of accuracy. But yeah, not a bad rifle at all. Um, really, really nice. My first experience this is with Mossberg rifles and yeah, not bad at all. So yeah. Uh, I think I've covered everything. Just, just a nice rifle, guys. Just a nice rifle. If you like this style, you know, you sort of, I, like I said at the start of the video, it reminds me of like the old school stuff, um, like the old Park Hale rifles that you used to get. Just really, uh, really sort of police stroke military style of rifle, but nice. Uh, but that is just a absolute bonus running AR magazines from a bolt action. I really do love that. That is one one thing that I'm really liking and I'm tending to see quite a bit of that now in the last probably couple of years or so. Maybe even longer, but it's just a, you know, it seems daft not to use the magazines that are, you know, mass produced and that popular. You know, it's, it's a great idea. Uh, that is a polymer, just thinking about it, polymer trigger guard. 
okay. Just nearly forgot that. So yeah, nice rifle guys, nice rifle for the money. So, but yeah, that's it, that's Rack and Load. Thanks for watching. That is your Rack and Load review of the Mossberg MVP Long Range. Thanks for watching, see ya.